डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी वेलकम टू डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी अहमदाबाद एस्टैब्लिश बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ गुजरात आई एम हियर एट चैतन्य स्टूडियो इन द ज्योतिर्मय कैंपस ऑफ डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फॉर द कोर्स ऑफ बैचलर ऑफ सोशल वर्क द पेपर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज BSWR 103 Communicative English We are going to discuss block 1 that is introduction to communication the second unit which is called the characteristics process and principles of communication and today we will discuss the process of communication now before we begin with this topic i am going to give you two scenarios we will look at these two scenarios throughout this question all right the first scenario is suppose you are traveling somewhere you're going somewhere and you see a person crossing the road you are looking at that person possibly he is blind possibly he is not aware of the surroundings and you see another vehicle coming towards that person this is the first scenario and the second example let us take of a movie i believe many of you must have seen the movie razi in that the character that is played by alia bhat the character of sehmat what happens is that when she goes into a different country there are messages that she needs to send these are the two examples that we will look out when we discuss this question today let us continue when we look at this topic of the process of communication the learning objectives will be you will be able to know and understand the process of communication you will be able to know and understand the stages involved in the process of communication all right so with these two learning objectives in mind let us understand the process of communication the process of communication comprises the transmission that is the sending that is the exchange of the sender's idea to the receiver and the receiver's reaction to the sender in the form of feedback all right so when i send a message and when you get the message you react towards it this entire thing comprises of the process of communication there are seven stages in the process of communication the circle that moves shows that the process of communication is an endless process communication itself is an endless process stage 1 the first step towards the process of communication is generation of idea okay now look at the first example that we had thought of there is a man crossing the road you look towards the man you see that there is a vehicle that is coming towards him and the person is unaware he does not know that he is going to be hit possibly by the coming vehicle what would you think about this situation what would you have on mind you might want to save the person so the first thought that comes to your mind is save this man the idea that was generated in your mind is the first stage in the process of communication that means the generation of idea all right look at the second example when sehmat was in another country she heard the message she heard someone talk and she wanted to know if the things are right so she went she heard she saw she knew that this was the message that needs to be communicated to someone in india so she had a thought that becomes the first step 
in the process of communication. That means having an idea. That means having a thought. That means having a feeling. Something that you want to exchange. Something that you want to tell. Something that you need to inform the person about. So the first stage is generation of idea. Then goes on the different stages. And we will look at all these stages one after the other. So what is generation of an idea or what is the generation of a thought? The process of communication begins when an idea, thought, feeling or a piece of information arises in the mind of the communicator and he wants to transfer it to someone. Now, the point is that even the, if the idea is generated, if you do not want to share it with anyone, then there is no communication. So, look at this line. It mentions that the idea arises in the mind of the communicator and he wants to transfer it to someone. Right? If the idea is just in the head, then there is no process of communication, then there is no exchange of any idea. So, there has to be an exchange, there has to be a transfer. Right? Then, the communicator is also called the sender. Now, a sender can be an individual, a single person. A sender can be a group of people giving the same message or it can even be a company. Okay. The second stage. After the generation of the thought, that means after the thought has been generated in the mind of the sender, he has to encode the message. Now, what do you mean by encoding? It is not a computer related term. Encoding means that the person has to send the message in a particular format. Right? Now, suppose for example, if you look at the first scenario, the man is crossing the road. The idea was save that man. How will you save that man? You will have an idea and then that idea has to be sent to the person. So you will encode your idea. You cannot just send a thought. Right? The thoughts have to be transformed into words or into symbols or into actions and these could be transferred. Right? So your idea, your thought have to be encoded. Right? Now see, for example, the first scenario, you shout, watch out or danger or somebody help. What did you do? The idea was to save the person. What did you do next? You encoded your ideas, you encoded your thoughts and made it transfer into words. Help, watch out, danger. That is oral communication. Suppose you had a, paint, a painting or a picture of the danger symbol. You would wave that at the person. If the person is not in the hearing range, then you can wave at the person. What did you do? You transformed or encoded your ideas into actions. That is the second stage. That means you encoded the message. Look at the second scenario of the movie. When Sehmet understood that she had to send a message, how did she encode the message? With the machine that she was given. Tuck, 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 tuck. What did she do? She encoded whatever she wanted to say. She learned that when she was back here and then she used the same process to encode whatever thought that she was going to send. That is called encoding. All right. Then what are the next stages? Like it, uh, let us look at that in detail later. So the second stage is encoding. What is encoding? When an idea is generated in the mind of the sender, he or she puts that idea in suitable symbols or signs. Like it can be words, it can be letters, it can be signals, sounds, gestures, pictures, anything. Whatever he finds that this should be the best way to send the message. The person, based on his understanding, will encode his thought. Why does he do that? He wants to represent the idea for the purpose of its transmission. You just cannot send or transmit a thought or an idea. It has to be communicated in different ways like words or letters or signals, sounds, gestures, pictures in so many different ways. This process is called encoding. All right. This becomes the second stage. I hope this is clear. Moving on to the third part. Now you have the message encoded. All right. The person has shouted help or save or watch out or 
Sehmat has tuk, 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 encoded the message. How will the message reach the receiver? The third stage is channel or media. Using a proper channel or using a proper media to send the message. It is very important to understand, to select the proper media or to select the proper channel according to your message. All right. Now, what is that? Channel or media. The sender conveys the message to the receiver through a suitable media and a channel. Suppose if I am talking to you, what am I doing? The media and the channel is, it could be through YouTube or through uh, different channels or through satellite or through video lectures. Anyway, the point is that I am sending the message to you through a particular channel, through a particular medium. Though the two different words are mentioned here, the words channel and medium can be used interchangeably. Understand the difference. For example, if you write a letter to someone, all right, you're writing a letter to someone, then the letter that you write is a medium. Okay, but the mail service, when you go and post it and through the postal service, through uh, India Post or whatever service that you have chosen, the mail service becomes the channel. When you're talking to someone on a telephone, the telephonic talk is a medium. How are you talking? You're talking using a telephone, but the telephonic uh, telecommunication system you are using any of the networks provided, the telecommunication system is a channel. Coming back to the first scenario, when you are going to shout, help, protect yourself, danger, save, watch out, the words are encoded. But when you shout, speech is the medium and your words travel. The air carrying the sound waves becomes the channel. Right? So the idea encoded and by that encoded message you use a particular channel or you use a particular medium and through the air the sound waves travel and then they reach the receiver all right so a proper channel a proper medium is very essential when you want to communicate when you talk about the second scenario when sehmat was using the encoded message to send that how did she send that that was sent through a satellite channel possibly Right? Of course, there are no connections otherwise. So through satellite channels, possibly the messages were sent and they were received. There was no other way in which she could, she could communicate. All right. Similarly, in the first scenario, you could use anything. You could shout, you could use words or you could wave actions, pictures, anything that becomes the channel that becomes the media, the way you communicate. Then comes the fourth stage idea has been generated it has been encoded the channel or medium has been used now it reaches the receiver okay now let us understand who the receiver is the receiver is the one who receives the message of course as the name suggests it could be an individual or a group of people or a company just like the sender a sender can be an individual a sender can be a group of people or a sender can be a company similarly a receiver can also be an individual, a receiver can be a group of people or a receiver can be a company. Now when the receiver, let us talk about the person, the two scenarios here. The person who is crossing the road, he gets the message. All right. When you shout danger or when you shout stop or when you shout watch out, the message through the air reaches the ears of the person. He becomes the receiver. Now what will he do? If he hears the message or if he sh uh, sees you uh, shouting and moving your hands up and down and jumping, the person receives the message, yes, but then what will he do? There comes the next step. That is stage five. Now, what is stage five? After the generation of an idea, the encoding of the message, using a proper channel or a medium, reaching the receiver, the fifth stage is decoding the message. Now, how do you decode the message? In the first scenario, when the person sees you, when the person hears your shout, what does he understand? Suppose he belongs to the same communication group. If he listens to your words, help or save yourself or watch out or danger, 
the point is that he might or might not understand english but he does understand the voice he understands that there is something wrong right through through the emotions of your voice or through the feeling that is sent through your voice the person will understand the danger in the situation so what does he do he decodes the message all right suppose if you sent a picture or if if you're waving he knows that no one will wave at him right in the center of the road he understand that there's something wrong right even if he's unable to hear even if he's unable to process the english words he might be uh, belonging to a different uh, you know communication or language society but the point is that he will understand the message because he decodes the message in the second scenario when sehmat had sent the message what do the people in india did they decoded the message of course the message was sent in uh, you know lines and bars and dots so that has to be decoded because a particular dot means something a particular line means something so if you remember the scene the person had to write the message on the board that was decoding the message that is very important if the message is encoded well the message will be the, the receiver will be able to decode the message as well that means the person who is sending the message and the person who is receiving the message should both be on the same page as in they should both understand the meaning of the message converted suppose if uh, you know uh, i believe if you seen the movie bahubali then there is a character who just comes and he uses different sounds through his mouth and of course the major characters the other characters do not understand what he is trying to say because they cannot decode so if the encoding is done in a particular way the decoding has to be done in the same way that comes handy all right so that is a decoding process so let us understand decoding on receiving the message the receiver interprets it by translating the signs and symbols into thoughts or ideas okay so when he receives the message the receiver part is done he decodes the message all right whatever signs there are whatever symbols there are whatever words that have been used whatever uh, letters that have been used those ideas those thoughts are understood decoded first all right the process of understanding the message by the receiver through translation of symbols or signals into ideas is called decoding look at this picture that is being formed now see the first stage was generation of an idea then came the encoding all right now there is decoding the words are there you have to decode them and you have to generate your own idea so from generation of an idea to encoding now it is back to decoding and then generation of an idea all right so the receiver will decode the message and the receiver will try to understand that he will translate the symbols or signals into ideas and this part this process is called decoding the sixth stage generation of an idea encoding using a proper channel or media receiver decoding now after the process of decoding the receiver will understand the message the receiver will understand the importance of the message the receiver will understand the information or the knowledge that is being sent to him through the message right so if he decodes it well if it was encoded well in the first case if he decodes it correctly if he decodes it well then he can understand the message well of course that depends on how he takes that so understanding the message the decoding of the message by the receiver will now generate a thought in his mind if he has decoded it well that will be converted into a thought that will be converted into an idea and then what will he do the message thus will generate an understanding in the mind of the receiver right that means now the receiver will understand the message suppose for example in the first scenario when the person decoded that there is something wrong with this he understood that the message that is being sent to them is of danger 
it is not necessary that the person might or might have understood or not that is defend, uh, definitely dependent on a particular situation or uh, on a particular person but the person actually understands the message according to his ideas according to his understanding and once he decodes once he understands the message there is something that he needs to do what is that that is next step so till then again let me clarify this understanding the message that means after decoding the message the person will understand the message that means there is some danger right in the second scenario the person has decoded the message and then he will read the message and oh this is what the person means right so that is where the person understands the message and as soon as the person understands the message the next step is taking place there is the final stage that is look at this after the receiver decodes and understand the message he or she sends a feedback now what is a feedback a feedback is the way in which the person replies how can a person reply it could again be a uh, verbal communication it can again be non verbal communication that means in the first scenario if the person has understood the message if the person has understood that there is something wrong there is some danger and okay now i have to look at the other side oh there is a vehicle coming right towards me what will he do he'll move he'll shift that is a feedback okay there is a possibility that after he moves he waves and says thank you that also is a uh, way of feedback but just movement can become a feedback all right so what happened was that the idea that you generated saving the person encoding through watch out using air as the medium and speech as the channel it reaches the receiver the receiver decodes the receiver understands and the receiver moves that again is the last stage that is the feedback looking at the second scenario when the people here in india read the message they understood the message what did they do they took actions it is not necessary that the person will tap back thank you so much sehmat right so feedbacks are not always uh, you know the way in which you have expected there could be different ways of feedback so coming back to the first scenario the person has moved that becomes the feedback the first part at least the initial part of the feedback so what is feedback the receiver decodes interprets and understands the message fully or partially okay as per his understanding it is not necessary that the person has to understand the message completely it is of course not necessary that will the person will understand it partially or not at all possibly you know so the person might or might not understand what you want to say but whatever he has understood he will provide a feedback okay now suppose for example if i ask you right now did you understand this part a few of you might say yes a few of you might not might say no a few of you might not respond i will not be able to see your reaction but you have responded right that becomes your feedback or suppose if if you are seeing this video then if you like this video then possibly that is a form of feedback all right so this becomes the feedback it is very necessary feedback is very necessary as it helps the sender to know if the receiver has understood the message well now it is not just about communication suppose if you are going for lunch or dinner to some restaurant or a cafe there also there are feedback books if you are visiting a shop or a showroom there are feedback books right so visitors book which they can also be called what do you do you review your experience there right uh suppose if if you order food through online channels through zomato or through Swig swiggy what do you do that they ask you for a feedback if you uh travel through an ola or uh, an uber car they ask you for a feedback what is the feedback that means that you either give them five stars or four stars depending on the experience that you've had the point is that the service provider will understand how your experience has been right so feedback makes it 
known to the sender that whatever has been used or whatever has been mentioned or what ha whatever has been suggested or communicated has been understood or not. That means, right? So, if, if the feedback is negative, the person will come to know that there's something wrong and then through a proper feedback only there could be improvement, right? So, if, if the, uh, the feedbacks are taken positively, if the, if the feedbacks are taken in a uh, constructive way, then that could be very important, that could be very beneficial to the company, right? So, that is the feedback, that becomes the seventh stage. And now what happens? Coming back to the first scenario, when the person hears your shout, moves aside, he is safe now, what will he do? He will say thank you or he will say this, just wave his hand. That means the moment he has stepped into safety, the person knows that he has to send a message. So now the idea is generated in that person's mind. So again the process continues. Right? The idea generated is to say thank you. What did he say? Thank you through words possibly. All right? He shouted thank you. Then again the air was used and the waves travelled and they reached your uh, ears and then you understood that he wants to say thank you and then you just say yeah okay great now be safe and enjoy your life and whatever. Right? So the, the process continues. With feedback the process continues. Thus communication is a two-way process between the sender and the receiver and the process goes on and on and on all right so this was the question that was the process of communication the images that have been used here are um, through google images and uh, thank you so much Smart, yeah, yeah,